I want to show you three simple but very important trace minerals that can hopefully reverse alopecia. Now, alopecia is an autoimmune disease that directly causes patches of hair loss throughout your scalp. And there are other autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's and lupus that can also do the same thing. How can a trace mineral deficiency cause you to lose your hair? Well, trace minerals are minerals needed in very tiny amounts. But just because they're needed in tiny amounts doesn't mean they don't have a profound effect over your body. These trace minerals are essential for a lot of different things. Regarding hair, they're essential in preventing autoimmune diseases, also in treating autoimmune diseases, as well as their effect directly in building up the hair protein itself. You know, when we think about protein, people think about uh, muscles, but there are a lot of other types of proteins in your body that people don't consider proteins. Uh, enzymes, for example. And I'm not just talking about digestive enzymes. I'm talking about the enzymes that are involved in your biochemistry that help make hormones, that help do the work of the body. Relating to the thyroid, you actually have enzymes that actually make body tissue. Regarding thyroid hormones, you have enzymes that actually can convert the inactive thyroid hormone, which is T4, to the active thyroid hormone, which is T3. And then you have proteins involved in your immune system that keep your immune system strong, that prevent you from a self-attack or the creation of antibodies against your own tissues. And out of all the minerals, there's three trace minerals that are very important to make sure that you get in your diet and understand other things that can create the deficiency. So let's first talk about iodine. You, you probably already know iodine is necessary to make thyroid hormones through enzymes. And as you're deficient in iodine, you can't make thyroid hormones. And when we're dealing with a thyroid autoimmune problem, there's some data out there that suggests that too much iodine can cause an autoimmune disease, but there's overwhelming evidence that that's actually not true. It's usually a deficiency of iodine that can create more of a problem than an excess. An average person is deficient in iodine because it's hard to get from our food because it's not in our soils. So unless they eat something from the sea, they're usually not going to get enough iodine unless they're taking something like sea kelp or seaweed uh, or in parts of the world where you eat a lot of seaweed, which is definitely not in America. We primarily get our iodine from sea salt. And even that, we probably don't get enough iodine to satisfy all the requirements that we need. When someone is deficient in iodine, they get an out-of-control um, estrogen level because iodine helps buffer estrogen. And when they don't have enough iodine and they get too much estrogen, they can develop cysts on the ovaries. They can develop fibrocystic breast. They can even develop nodules on the thyroid gland itself. Another interesting thing about iodine is that you can be deficient not from your diet, but from other things interfering with the absorption of iodine, like fluoride, okay? Whether you're getting some type of dental whitening type therapy, or you're drinking tap water with fluoride, as well as chlorine. Chlorine also interferes with iodine. So there's three big things that can interfere with um, iodine. Uh, fluoride, chloride, and bromine, which is in a lot of enriched flour products, as in the bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, things like that, which you're probably not eating because you've been watching my channel. But there's another source of fluoride that you may not suspect. In fact, 20% of all medications out there are fluoride-based, including Prozac, statin drugs, other antidepressants, certain antibiotics, certain antacid medications, as well as certain anti-inflammatories all contain fluoride, which can interfere with iodine. And by the way, as far as the amount of iodine you need on a daily basis, I would recommend about 200 micrograms, okay? Not milligrams, micrograms. Iodine is very, very important um, in a growing child. If a child or an infant is deficient, they can develop all sorts of cognitive deficiencies. But uh, sea kelp, uh, seafood, sea salt is all good to take if you want to build up your iodine. Now, the next trace mineral is called zinc, okay? Zinc, as you know, is very, very important in your immune system. Um, and 
when people get autoimmune diseases, they're usually deficient in zinc. And this zinc deficiency allows a condition where your immune system can get out of control. But the best bioavailable sources of zinc is from meat, fish, and eggs, not plant-based sources. Plant-based sources are not good sources of zinc. One of the most common causes of a zinc deficiency is by consuming too much cereal. Okay, Cereal has phytates, just like any grains, and these phytates block minerals, especially zinc. Zinc is one of the most important minerals for your immune system, and without it, you're very, very susceptible to infections and other problems, including inflammation. But zinc directly is involved in certain enzymes, which are proteins, that actually build up your hair. And as far as the amount of zinc, if you were going to take it as a supplement, I would recommend about 50 milligrams. But if you're consuming things like red meat, or even beef liver, or even oysters, or seafood, chances are you're getting enough zinc. But if you're exposed to mercury, that can increase the need for more zinc. If you consume a lot of sugar, or you're exposed to a lot of stress, your requirement for zinc goes dramatically up. Okay, the next mineral is selenium. Selenium is involved in 35 different proteins, okay? And again, I'm talking about those protein enzymes that do most of the work in the body. If you're deficient in selenium, you can start getting graying of the hair. You can start developing alopecia directly. Or a deficiency of selenium can lead to Hashimoto's. Selenium is a catch-22 because deficiency can create a problem with alopecia. And an excess or a toxicity can create alopecia. So it's one of those trace minerals that you just need just the right amount. You don't want to take more. More is not better. Mercury can also interfere with selenium. Uh, a lot of women who are pregnant uh, are deficient in, in selenium, not to mention zinc and even iodine. So this is just another reason why if someone is going through pregnancy, it's so important to take these trace minerals. Now, there are also genes that help you absorb selenium. And there also could be a genetic mutation that causes difficulty in getting enough uh, selenium. So in this case, if you're just getting the minimum amount, um, you may have deficiency symptoms. And you can get a genetic test to determine this. And I've been doing a deep dive in this DNA topic, which I'll do more videos on. But so many people have genetic problems with minerals and vitamins. And this especially relates to like B12, folate, vitamin D, and even vitamin C. The other interesting thing about selenium is that it seems to control uh, vitamin E levels. It protects a person from becoming deficient in vitamin E, maybe because of selenium is a precursor for glutathione, which is a powerful antioxidant, and other antioxidants as well. The amount of selenium a person needs uh, would be between 50 micrograms to 200 micrograms, which really is a tiny amount. Um, one Brazil nut uh, is enough to satisfy what you would need. Don't eat the whole bag, okay? Just one at a time per day because you can actually get a toxic amount fairly quick. There are other nutrients as well that greatly influence the hair. And I'm just going to quickly run down the list. Iron, okay, and B12, primarily because of the function of what they can do to increase your oxygen levels and your blood levels, your red blood cell levels, to your scalp. Without this blood and oxygen to the scalp, um, the roots of the hair can't survive. And probably the biggest reason why women are deficient in iron is because of menstruation. And if that's your problem, I put a link down below of how to correct that specific issue. Regarding B12, it could be that you're a vegan, or it could also be that you have genetic issue with uh, a problem called methylation. Uh, for more information, I put a link down below with that too. Now, vitamin D, very, very important with any autoimmune disease because it reduces inflammation. And even though a vitamin D deficiency doesn't cause like alopecia directly, it can cause a loss of body hair, which is more of a alopecia for the entire body, but not necessarily just on the scalp. But if you have any type of autoimmune problem, you should be taking vitamin D on a daily basis, roughly about 20,000 IUs. Now, let's talk about biotin for a second. A lot of people take biotin in very large amounts. Um, biotin is vitamin B7, 
it's, and it's involved in protein th synthesis, especially the hair and the nails. But if you're deficient in biotin, it's, your hair is going to be very dry and frizzy. You might experience shedding of the hair. You may have just general hair loss. A couple reasons why people are deficient in biotin, because your gut flora makes it. It could be you have taken antibiotics. It could be you consume a lot of raw eggs, which by the way, the egg yolk is the thing that has the most biotin. But if you have raw eggs, uh, there's a certain compound in there that locks up your biotin. So you could become deficient. Uh, another cause would be pregnancy, which increases the demand for biotin. Or you may have a genetic problem with a certain protein that helps you absorb um, biotin. And you have a problem with that, which means you just need a little bit more. And lastly, folate. This is interesting because a folate deficiency is a very common deficiency. Uh, even though folate comes from dark leafy green vegetables, a lot of people have a problem with a certain gene called MTHFR, which requires them to consume more folate, not folic acid, but folate, so they can start to build up some of these proteins, including hair. Now, I talked about one problem with hair loss. If you haven't seen this video on hair loss, which covers other things, you should check it out. I put it up right here.